Yes, I was here from 94 to 96, and I'll start by talking about how I was completely distracted by the opportunity to get a day job that um, sort of led me on a path that um, wasn't exactly what I intended. And after several years of studying the former Soviet Union, living in Moscow, working at the State Department, finishing up here, I decided I needed a break from Russia and from uh, several hard winters, and I moved to California and um, got involved in what was then a very interesting period in the internet um, industry. And then after several years, I woke up in LA one morning and realized enough of the sunny, you know, dry dreamland. I was longing for those, those wonderful winters in Russia. <laughs> and <laughs> I was missing those late night conversations at the table, in the kitchen, in the vodka, the pickles. You know, it was just something I really missed, and I decided to reconnect. And, you know, I was out with friends, you know, because everyone in L.A. is somehow connected to entertainment. And I was out one night, and I was hanging out with some executive producers from the, um, the Travel Channel, talking to them about why do you always put these television shows on about the best toilets in Las Vegas? You know, why not do something interesting about Russia? And, you know, Russia just does not exist for the entertainment industry in, in Los Angeles. They thought I was crazy and completely dis dismissed me. And literally, and I'm not exaggerating, I went home that night and I wrote up a structure for a documentary film about Russia that would be honest and true and interesting. And it may not be for the crowd that watches shows about Vegas toilets, but it would be interesting to you <laughs> and to my Russian friends. So I, um, luckily I worked in an internet company, as I told you, so you know we had dogs, we had free massages, we had a zen garden. <laughs> And I took a sabbatical, you know. So anything you can do to avoid working, you know, works in LA. So I went back to Russia, and I have to tell you, I was flabbergasted when I got off the plane, picked up the Moscow Times. Right across the front was this big article about how beautiful the newly designed toilets in Moscow were. <laughs> and I hadn't been back to Russia in several years, and it's, you know, we all can appreciate the, the great strides that have, they have taken in, in that realm. <laughs> But I wanted to specifically make a film about literature in Russia, which is a, it's a tall order for a documentary film, but it's, I really wanted to show that, that, you know, that, that beautiful um, sort of existence and those beautiful relationships that people have with their, their favorite poets and authors and what that means in the society that's changing. So I went back to Russia after a few years of sort of bouncing around with the camera. I went back on a Likachev Foundation Fellowship, and that's a wonderful program if anyone has an opportunity to get involved with that. And they set me up with the director of the Pushkin House Museum in St. Petersburg, Moika Dvanatsit. And for the three years I'd been researching, I had avoided Pushkin. I mean, enough Pushkin, right? It's Pushkin overload, basically. But she actually completely changed my view, um, introduced aspects of Pushkin and Russian culture that I hadn't ever noticed before. And she showed me things that were new in the field of the study of Pushkin. So for the next few years, I worked on a film about Pushkin, a documentary film about how Pushkin became so important in Russia. And I think that's one of the key questions. You know, I mean, you ask a Russian, well, why is Pushkin so important? And they sort of stare at you like, what do you mean? You know, of course, I mean, it's Pushkin. So that was sort of the goal, figure out how he became so important. So the film goes through Russian history, um, but it's also a journey through Russia today. I, I found these really interesting people who work in their respective fields, somehow connected to Pushkin. And so as I go through Moscow and Petersburg and out to Buryatia on the Mongolian border, um, you know, I interviewed people who were somehow connected to Pushkin and could explain sort of how he influenced their lives in Russia and in you know, contemporary Russia. So it was this beautiful you know, picture about Russia. Um, so I just finished it. We just released it in um, London in June at, on Pushkin's birthday at Pushkin House. And we did sort of get caught up in a bit of the, the current US-Russia meltdown, I'm sad to say. But one of my backers turned out to be Gazprom, <laughs> thanks to, well, thanks to a fellow Rika alum who married into Gazprom. And um, the, film was supposed to be, the film was supposed to premiere at Tribeca in April. And two weeks before the festival, the Tribeca Film Festival decided they didn't want to have anything to do with a Gazprom-sponsored event. And in the Russian press, certain Russian Duma members decided that Gazprom shouldn't have had anything to do with an American film project, even though it was about Pushkin. So that aside, Gazprom or no Gazprom, the film exists. And um, Liz, I have for haven't forgotten what we talked about wherever, yes, 
you know, so I'm looking for opportunities to screen it. So please be in touch and look forward to sharing that with you in the future. Thank you.